So now we're going to uh, look at doing uh, production, uh, very quick production of lots of examples of our um, uh, two by two chi-square of independence test uh, so we can play around with the trolley problem. Okay, so here I've set up a bunch of things. Notice I've got lots of different colors so that you can uh, it'll help you see you can stop the video and pause it um, look at things you can go back look at them uh, but what I suggest is you you try to set up what I've ended up setting up here and let's kind of look at what I have so here in row two um, all the way over from A to E uh, these are just um, items I've typed in to the different cells uh, so participant N or participant number, you know, how many participants are in the uh, trolley problem experiment. Um, the p-value, the resulting p-value from our experiment, I want that because what I want to do is create a plot that has um, as the x-values the number of participants and as the y-values the p-value uh, from that. And um, so uh, then here is, I, I just thought, well, it might be easier if I split up uh, the number of hypothetical number uh, of people doing live mice. And now up here, see above in yellow, I have 0.5 and that I entered. If I double click, you see it's just the number 0.5. That's all that's in there is that number. and. Um, if I double click here, it's just the number 50. So these two items in the bright yellow are um, items that I am going to enter and possibly change uh, at any given point. So um, I have those and, and so then uh, I have this 0.5 for the proportion of people doing the hypothetical uh, part of the experiment and then uh, 0.5 would be the proportion doing the live mice. Now, I don't enter 0.5 and 0.5 because I might mess that up. I might accidentally enter, you know, if it's not 0.5, I might enter 0 0.8 and then 0.3 and that doesn't add to 1. That would be a problem. And so to, to try to mitigate my errors, um, I know that whatever this number is here, I need one minus that number here, so I use that formula. So I say equals one minus, and then I clicked on C1 to, to make the C1. You could also type it in, but I suggest clicking on the cells to get their addresses. Uh, again, so you don't tend to mess it up. And, and so I have that, and, and hit enter, and I have the 0.5. Then um, here, I actually, both of these are labels, so E1 is also a label. Um, and uh, I'm doing uh, the hypothetical group and the live group there. Um, so those labels, and, and we'll look at those in a minute, those proportions. Uh, but again, so I had uh, 50 participants, half of them were doing the hypothetical. And so my formula here, I have um, C1, so that's that cell, times A3, that cell. Now, I, I put a dollar sign on the A and a dollar sign on the 1 uh, because I always want to look at, at this row. Uh, that never changes um, because my numbers are up here, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Uh, I always want to look at this column because that's where the number of participants is. So I put a dollar sign on the A but not the 3 because uh, I will want that to change as I copy things down. Okay, so there's that formula and then um, when I dragged it over here, I got the D, the C changed to a D, and nothing changed here because the A couldn't change. Uh, but notice it's now looking at D, so that 0.5 times the number of participants, and they do indeed add up to 50. Okay, now um, our hypothesized, uh, or um, our data, you know, the way we want our data to work, uh, so I guess that wasn't really hypothesized, um, but uh, so they found um, of the hypothetical group, uh, two thirds were saying yes, push the button, and and so I put that two thirds in here, 
Uh, notice I don't have the yes push the button anywhere listed here because I'm I'm trying to um, make this as compact as possible. Uh, now I suppose I could have gone down one more row and put it up here. I could still even do that, but um, but there's my two thirds, and uh, then here the five six from the those five six of the people push the button for the uh, actual live mice group, and so I have those, and then once again here instead of putting in one third, um, well. I did one minus uh, whatever this number is, and then I did that the same thing down here, again because then the formula gets it right, and and so I'm less likely to have some sort of error, and so I have it again here too. Okay, so that uh, fills in all this, um, this grouping here. Now here is my original data table. So in this block I put my two by two numbers of actual number of people. If I had 50 um, and 25 in each of my uh, groups, uh, the, the uh, uh, hypothetical group and the live group, um, then I also want those to reflect the two-thirds and five-sixths and so forth. So uh, what I did was in this cell, I took F1, that number, the two thirds, times my 25. Because two thirds of those people, the hypothetical ones, should decide to push the button. So I have that. And then uh, one third of those uh, uh, people, oh gosh. See, this is a good thing to click on these. Uh, I noticed that I have a, a, a slight problem here with this, is that says D3. Uh, that shouldn't be D3, that should be C3, so I'll, I'll fix that. Now the nice part is, with 50-50, that's not a problem, but you see that would make a difference if I changed the 50-50. Now let's check these, make sure I got those right. So this is uh, F2 times C3, um, but you see that's wrong. That should be the live mice. Uh, this row is, is live mice, so that should be the D3. Always good to check your work. And here D3 again is correct. So uh, I am using the, the right pieces here to, uh, to get those numbers at this point. Okay, so those formulas are good, and um, here I just did the sum of those columns, and the reason I did that as opposed to copying anything or something like that is I want to know that these numbers make sense, and when I look here and I see 37.5 and 12.5, they add to 50, you know, so that's a sum, so that all makes sense that those add to 50, and the, I got the 50, because I summed those up. And, and so I'm, I'm using the formulas to also check my work. And so there's a sum, and there's a sum of those. And, and so there's my table, my fixed table. So again, very carefully, this should be uh, the G1, that number times the hypothetical, because this first row is all hypothetical. And then the second row is all the live mice. So uh, they should be times D3. So both of these, that one's times C3, uh, this one is times C3, and then this one is times D3, so that's good, and this one is times D3, so that's good. Okay, so that's all set. And then here, um, what I did, I didn't use any dollar signs as I had in, in the template before because uh, there's only the four pieces I need to fill in. Um, and part of it is I'm going to copy this whole thing down and dollar signs do, you know, can make a, a problem as, as, you, as you copy things down. And so um, we can go back and maybe look at the dollar signs here to see why they shouldn't be a problem when we copy down. Um, 
and uh, so so here again I'm, I'm taking uh, the corresponding uh, row and column sums uh, H3 and F5 and dividing by the 50 H5 and uh, I do that for each of these um, so I have the H4 F5 divided by H5 and these I just uh, because I didn't use any dollar signs I just typed them each in and it didn't take long and I um, got all those and I can check that they are looking at the right places okay so I have those these again are just sums uh, I just use the same stuff I had used here uh, I, I did in fact just copy this whole block over to here and then get rid of what was in those four spaces and retype it and and so here's my expected stuff in blue now I need to look at the difference uh, between the the actual data and the uh, expected and so I do that here and so you see I'm taking the F3 this number minus that number I'm squaring it and then dividing by that number and you know I hit enter and then of course once I have that I can simply uh, copy and paste fill in this way uh, go that way and you know if I look at this formula for instance it's taking the corresponding uh, values here looking at their difference squaring it and dividing by the expected sum and then um, here is the sum of those four items so you see it just says sum and it's boxed in those four and then from that that's our chi-square number and so there's my uh, the L5 right there I do a chi dist L5 one degree of freedom because it's just two by two so one degree of freedom and there's my p-value and then over here I simply say well get that p-value from here I say equals m5 and that's the p-value so that's all of that that I have filled in um, again looking here at dollar signs notice the only dollar sign here is on that one so that anytime I copy this down it still looks at that proportion right there so so that's fine and the same thing here on that two uh, as I copy it down the only dollar sign has to do with that um, five six proportion so that'll be fine now uh, notice I've got these highlighted I don't think you have to put anything in here I think you can just leave those blank um, and and still plot but if you can't um, real quickly you can just say okay I'm gonna say equals and I'm just gonna click on that 50 enter and pull that down and so that's still 50 and pull it over to here and uh, well actually I guess I don't know that I even need it over to these but um, uh, but possibly in order to get your plot to work you will have to have data without any missing lines and and you can check that out very very quickly we'll we'll test it out here uh, just after our first copy um, but for right now whoops I don't know, um, for right now I'm gonna get rid of that because I, I don't think you'll have to have it but I did color that in because we don't want to put anything there we want to um, at this point now that I've got done this once for the 50 I want to highlight everything okay and do a copy now I don't want to drag down and and it's important that you don't fill in that way you really actually have to do a copy and you can use a control C or you can go up here to edit and find copy okay so you can copy all sorts of ways now click here and do your paste and notice it, it puts everything here and everything's correct uh, as far as it all matches that stuff but now I can say oh I want 75 participants instead of 50 and everything updates and I get a new p-value so my p-value went from 17 point 
one seven or seventeen percent down to nine and a half percent around ten percent and and so just like that I was able to change the number of participants not a problem and now I can well I'm going to go ahead and, and um, do a few of these uh, so uh, I'll paste and I'll come down here and paste so uh, paste that's a, I think 150 uh, paste uh, 175 and paste that gets me to 200 I think uh, so here's 100 125 I'll do that 150 175 and 200 and you see by the time I get down to 200 my p-value is much less than 1% it's almost a half a percent it's 0 .06, uh, zero six five so about 0.65 percent uh, so nice small p-value uh, even way back here I'm below my 0 0.05 back at 125 um, but, you know, if I'm looking at making a study, uh, I think I want more room for error than that. Uh, because, for instance, suppose I said, well, you know, I'll just get 125 people to do this study. Um, the problem is you may have to throw out a bunch of data as well. And, and so all of a sudden you throw out your data and you only really have 100 participants and now you can't for these particular numbers if this is what you got um, your study wouldn't show a difference you would be above your 0 0.05 and and so you know what this does for me is it tells me kind of how many participants I might want and and so you know maybe 175 is fine um, because I can lose 50 of them and at least for these numbers still be okay um, now, I don't know that I would get these numbers if I tried to replicate this study. Uh, so again, you know, that's a good reason to go up maybe to uh, 200 or so. But I, I'm feeling pretty safe at 200. Now, you know, once I generate this, you know, it was that quick and easy. Once I, once I made that first um, set of three rows where I filled all that stuff in, then I could just copy this down and just like that, I have my XY data and so I could highlight that and uh, in my case I go to insert and chart and I want to scatter plot so I say scatter plot now I'm not going to add a bunch of other stuff I just want to see that so finish and in my case my plot worked okay so you see my my plot did just fine here and um, and so, um, you know, it's ready for, I, I need to add probably some, leg, you know, uh, axes labels, uh, a better legend maybe, uh, a title, you know, a title that reflects what the heck's going on and the fact that I used half and half in each group. Um, so, you know, I get that. And now I am going to uh, just sort of move it out of the way for a moment. I'll probably need to move it down there. Okay. Um, well, actually, I guess I don't. I don't need to move it that far. Um, but now notice um, that if I add uh, the equals whatever's there, and I uh, fill that in there, and fill it in here, and then. Um, do a, a copy and a paste and a paste and so forth this is you know uh, notice the graph over at the right it's not changing and and so you know you might say well it's not graphing that data but I disagree it is graphing those data um, or at least I think it is and if we decide it's not we can go show that it, we would get that same picture uh, if it is uh, but the thing is 
these three points are all the same so they are all right there they're all plotted on top of each other so you see it it doesn't doesn't really matter if they're there so if your uh, spreadsheet won't let you plot with lines missing in the middle um, but I think it will so I don't I don't think this is a problem but if it did all you have to do is fill in with exact copies of whatever was there and and it won't care it'll still plot them it won't know the difference and and so just to check uh, I'll edit this and I'll go here to my data series uh, let's see data ranges I think uh, data series and notice that if, it, if you look at the X values here, um, it says start at A3, okay, right there at that 50, and then it does a colon down to A21. So that says, yeah, it, it's looking at all those values. Okay, so I can cancel. Uh, it's looking at all those values, and uh, it doesn't look any different than when I had that, those rows missing in there. Okay, because it's, they're all the same points. All right, so that is how we can um, uh, get some data for different numbers of participants. Now, that all had the same proportion of half went to the hypothetical, half went to the live mice. Well, you know, suppose either you didn't want to plan it that way because you, you didn't didn't want to buy that many mice or something like that well we can then ask well what about point six so if I hit point six notice immediately that changes to point four um, these change for 50 to 30 and 20 instead of um, uh, 25 and 25 and let's kind of pull this down a little bit and let's look here, make sure I, I didn't screw things up here. Um, you know, here's 30 for the first group, the hypothet uh, hypothetical group, and the live mice group has 20, which is what it's supposed to do, so that worked. And they add to 50, and um, here are the expected and so forth, and here's the p-value. And notice when I go to 60 and 40, um, all of a sudden that p-value went up a bit, um, not tons and tons, uh, but it did go up a little bit. And remember down here at 200, it was 0 0.006. Now it's up a little bit to 0 0.009. So 200 would still probably work for the 0.4 and the 0.6, uh, but I get a new graph. And you see it's that simple to generate new graphs uh, for these numbers. And so that is how... Uh, we can kind of make a, a production model of our spreadsheet that we can generate graphs like this very, very quickly. And again, um, you don't want a bare graph like this. You want to add some axes labels. You know, this needs to say p-value. This needs to say number of participants. Uh, we need a title on this that reflects what's going on and reflects the fact that we use 0.6 and 0.4. Now, if you get really fancy, I suppose you could, you know, then copy these numbers for any given um, proportions up here, copy them, and um, you could end up putting all your data on one graph. Uh, that would be fine. Um, I, I'm not doing that right here, but, uh, but that would be nice, and it might be a really nice comparison. But at any rate, even if we do it as separate graphs, you know, I can see kind of how the number of participants affects my expected p-value if my data really do look like, well, that seems to be trying to move it. I don't know why it's doing that, but here, I'll try it again. There we go. Uh, highlighted it you really can't tell I guess um, but uh, um, you know we based on the study we're trying to to look at and and kind of do what if analysis with um, it had these proportions the two-thirds and the five-sixths uh, for the two groups and and so that's what we're using but of course you could even change these and say well what if you expected these two groups to be a little closer together um, but you still were hoping to show they're different. Um, 
you know, what then? And so, for instance, you know, here instead of two thirds, uh, we had what two thirds and five six. Well, how about um, what if they were like three fourths? Okay, and then you see everything updates, and um, notice that now with 200 participants, if if I used um, just 200 people and 60% uh, um, of them, so 120 of them can't quite see that. I can move it over here. 120 of them did the hypothetical part, and 80 of them did the live mice, um, and we were expecting. 0.75 and 0.83, uh, so in other words, three fourths and five sixths. Um, then, in that case, uh, 200 people is not enough. And well, how many is enough? I don't know. Um, you'd have to keep going with this uh, more people uh, to figure out how many is enough. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to go by 25s. Um, I did that here because you know I had some idea that 200 was going to be enough and and so I wanted to get a few data points uh, to kind of see what it looked like but you know you could go 50 100 150 and so forth so you know I can and notice I can do that that quickly come down here 150 come down here to 200 uh, 250 300 and 350 you know so I could get my nice new plot that looks like this and at that point notice that 350 were still too high and so probably in you know I can always just check oh, 400 uh, yeah that's just below the 0.05 but I would probably if that's what I was going to do I would want more than 400 participants to start with because again I would assume some of the data would get thrown out so there you go um, you know this is a very quick way once you get this thing set up you can generate these plots very very fast and and so then you can ask these questions about you know how many participants given how I expect to have them split up between my two groups and then also even what do I expect the difference in the answer to be and again this uh, started as two-thirds and with two-thirds and 350 wow we're way down there you know that's really nice so um, you know this this is a very nice quick easy way to uh, check whether your um, numbers and your expected values and so forth are actually going to work out for the study I mean why start the study if if it's going to be no good anyway all right if you only used 100 participants um, and you really did expect to get these kind of results up here oh well you just wasted your time um, because you get that 0.06 and now I mean yeah it's a relative thing wasted time uh, you learn something um, it really does look like there probably is something going on but you did not get enough participants uh, to actually be able to to justify it statistically so you know sucks at that point right so um, you know this is a nice thing to do and for your your final project for the semester you know it's this might be a good thing to do not necessarily that you'll be using chi-square but this type of analysis is a nice thing to look at to see you know oh okay if if you're expecting certain kinds of data and and all that is your study going to work and um, and you can usually get some idea what what you think the data might look like and and so then you can decide um, whether you have enough money and enough resources and so forth to do the study or if you need to go out and get more resources in order to make the study work all right so that's that for that video